Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Dave Rabin of Hughes. Dave, thank you very much for joining us. Now, what do you see as the biggest challenge to Hughes' market share in the broadband sector? Well, you know, we don't look at it in terms of market share for satellite. It's really how can we grow the position of satellite within telecommunications? So how can we reach more people with satellite broadband? And so the, the challenge is how can we, particularly outside the U.S., where in the U.S. there's lots and lots of people who can afford broadband and, and pay the, the kind of ARPUs that we see in North America, but the challenge is how can we take satellite broadband to people in developing parts of the world in a cost-effective way? That's really the challenge. And so we're looking at things like cellular backhaul and community Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspots. Hot now, I was just going to say, what are the key sectors for you? So well, when, when we look at the market, there's, there's several sectors that are really interesting for us. Number one, of course, is internet access. And that's really where we've built most of our business, over 1.2 million subscribers in the Americas. Um, but most of those are single home, single VSAT. Um, and that's a big part of the business. But uh, beyond that, again, to reach the market, with in developing parts of the world, we think cellular backhaul is going to be a, a key market segment. Uh, additionally, Wi-Fi hotspots, as I mentioned, will be important. And then finally, um, the other market segment, that additional market segment, I should say, that, that we think is interesting is uh, mobility, particularly aeronautical broadband. Well, you've walked up aeronautical broadband. I was going to ask you about in-flight connectivity and how, how do you think that is going to grow? So um, we, we think it'll grow well, but l let me clarify. We're not trying to be an in-flight communication service provider. Um, you know, we're not the ones who are going to drill holes into airplanes and, and, and offer the service ultimately. Instead, we want to provide the technology and the capacity where we have it uh, to empower the in-flight uh, service providers. Um, but we think that that's a wonderful market. Um, you know, people today, they want to be connected wherever they are. Uh, and particularly with our, our technology where we can, you know, we, we're, we're building a, a, an aeronautical terminal that can deliver, or we have built, I should say, an aeronautical terminal that can deliver 600 megabits to the airplane. Um, you know, so that's a, that's a lot of throughput. Um, and, and that's what the market needs. And together with our capacity over the Americas, we think that that's a very powerful solution to our service partners, the in-flight service providers. So what's Hughes' view on the new influx of LEO constellations? So as you probably know, uh, we've been working with OneWeb. We were an early investor in OneWeb, and we've also done a lot of the system development work and, and the gateway uh, infrastructure for OneWeb. So fundamentally, um, our view is uh, we, we like LEOs, we like OneWeb, and we think the NGSOs have a lot of potential. On the other hand, uh, even after we've invested with OneWeb and, and done a lot of development work, we've continued to buy and invest in geo HTSs. And so the point is that we think it's complementary. We think that LEO and uh, geo HTS are very complementary. So with the geo HTS, we can l put down tremendous amounts of capacity in a small area. So there's capacity density that we can achieve with the geo HTS. With a LEO system, we're able to get coverage ubiquitous coverage and we're able to get low latency. So we think that those two actually complement one another and ultimately we think there's a, a good potential to have remote terminals which can combine either uh, of the systems, be able to access maybe on a policy-based uh, routing uh, mm -hmm. method, be able to access as appropriate a LEO or NGSO, I should say, in a, in a GEO HTS. So we, uh, the message with Hughes is we think that they're actually very complementary. Now, tell me a little bit more about the new satellite, Jupiter 3. How's that progressing? Yeah, um, Jupiter 3, I, I think it was last year that we announced the contract with SSL to build mm -hmm. Jupiter 3. And uh, I, I think we're characterizing it as an ultra 
HTS. That's right. Yeah. And and we're trying to get away from a specific number. Um, you know, because that's you know people measure capacity in different ways. Um, I think what's important is uh, it's going to bring a tremendous amount of capacity to the Americas. It will extend over a very wide geographic area. We're very pleased with the progress of it. And it looks like, uh, I think I think we we're saying about two, 2021 is when we're expecting to see uh, that satellite be able to come to market. Uh, and we think it'll allow us to expand the services that we're offering, uh, both in terms of you know, how much we can give sub subscribers, but as well, um, we think it'll allow us to enter some new areas. Now, you've made an announcement today with the Malaysian government. Can you expand on that a little bit more? Sure, what we announced is uh, a, a, an agreement to provide a, a Mutiara in Malaysia, which is owned by the Ministry of Finance with a, a Jupiter system that they're going to use to offer services to uh, Malaysian government entities. So the idea is that um, they'll take the same technology and, and uh, capabilities that, uh, you know, infrastructure that we Hughes uses for our own services, uh, they're going to be able to take that technology and apply it over Malaysian satellite capacity or whatever satellite they, they work out. They'll be able to provide similar kinds of services to their customers in Malaysia, the, the government, primarily government agencies in Malaysia. So we're quite excited about that. When you're, when you're selling to something like a government agency, is there any adaption you have to do of the service that you wouldn't normally? Well, um, they're pretty straightforward because, you know, at, at this point, people are looking for People are looking for the same thing. They're looking for good quality broadband. They're looking for high availability, reliability, you know, strong QoS. Particularly, these are enterprise customers, and so they're looking for those kinds of factors. And but we see that any kind of enterprise customer is going to be looking for those key things. So I, I'd say it's um, the answer to that is probably no. You know, it, it, people are all looking for high quality be able to deliver high QoS and with strong SLAs behind the service. And our technology enables that. Dave, thank you very much. Richard, it's been my pleasure.